So, on our way back from another tank of gas story, we stopped by the Siskiyou Smoke Jumper Base Museum. It's easy to find, it's right off 199 between Cave Junction and O'Brien. No appointment, didn't know what to expect. Well, we certainly didn't expect to learn some of the most fascinating local history we've ever heard from one of the most interesting persons we've ever met. Meet John Dorn and his mustache. So this mustache has been on my face since July 8th, 1972. Wow. He's the docent at the Siskiyou Smoke Jumper Base Museum. He's also a former smoke jumper. Once a jumper, always a jumper. And a very cool dude. The Smoke Jumper Museum he cares for is dedicated to the bravest firefighters around. Smoke jumpers parachute from planes to fight wildfires before they spread. But in 1943, they weren't as worried about wildfires as they were about firebombs. Well, the Japanese had invented this uh, fire balloon. It was a, a fairly large balloon made out of paper, and it would carry an incendiary bomb. Now, the war broke out, and the United States joined World War II, and the resources along the coast of the United States are so valuable, they determined they needed a jump base down here in case the Japanese tried to set the forests on fire. So in 1943, they built the base here and manned it with smoke jumpers to protect the country from the possibility of Japanese firebombs. Now that's a stunning story with another very local connection. In May of 1945, a balloon bomb landed near Gerhard Mountain, northeast of Bly, Oregon. It killed six people having a picnic. These were the only wartime casualties in the 48 states. And there was another reason the Japanese balloon bomb program was a huge failure. The unfortunate thing for the Japanese was that they sent them at the wrong time and they were hitting here in like in May. Of the thousands of balloons they sent, none of them started a fire. They had their timing wrong. Had they sent them over in August, it could have been devastating. By the way, only a few hundred of these things have been found. There's still thousands of bombs all over the Pacific Northwest. All right, let's go inside. You're suited in a protective suit and you carry a little bit of equipment with you, but most of your gear is parachuted to you once you're on the ground. Smoke jumpers used the fewest amounts of tools as they could because they had to pack it all out. So normal complement for two jumpers would be two shovels, two Pulaski's, and that was your firefighting equipment. So you dug line, you stopped the fire, you cut trees down if you had to, but it was all handwork, very arduous, and you had to be in top physical shape because it was very demanding. Now about that very cool plane parked right outside, it's called a Twin Beach, and it was the go-to aircraft for smoke jumpers. Well, we got this aircraft in 2013, brought it over here in parts, and we, are, we want to get it restored to look exactly the way a Twin Beach would have looked back in the 70s, 60s and 70s when we were jumping it. Hours at the Siskiyou Smoke Jumper Base Museum are 10A to 4P. If you got a big group, call them first and visit siskiyousmokejumpersmuseum.org. Scott G, NBC5 News.